For a while now, I've wanted to make an electric mountain board. I didn't want to take an existing mountain board and just put some motors on it and a battery. That seemed too easy and it wouldn't really be mine if I did that. So instead, I want to build one totally from scratch, or at least as from scratch as I can muster. Now, if I'm going to do this, I don't want it to be just any mountain board. I want it to be special. And with that, I want it to have suspension and a kind of complex steering mechanism. Now recently I've gotten some new inspiration on how I could do this, different ways that I could make it work. Now this frame will be made out of aluminum and to make it I would need to be able to bend it at 90 degree angles. Now I don't have a lot of experience with metal working and when I think of aluminum I think of it as pretty brittle so today I'm going to do some tests with annealing it. So I've got a few aluminum brackets here. These brackets are from previous attempts of the 3D printer project. I've got two thicknesses of brackets here. This one is a little over an eighth of an inch, so like 3.3-ish millimeters, and this one's like right on two millimeters. So today I'm gonna run some tests with these, see if I can properly anneal them, and then bend them to relatively sharp 90 degree angles. So what I've learned from my research so far is that aluminum annealing is very different from steel annealing. So when you're annealing steel, you heat it up to temperature, hold it there for a little bit, and then you let it gradually slow down. You can even stick it in some sand or other insulating material to keep the heat in even longer and further lengthen the time it takes to lose its heat. But for aluminum, it's the opposite. Instead of slowly cooling it down over time like you do with steel, you instead quench it. Aluminum is also more difficult than steel because it doesn't change color. Steel will glow orange and red when you heat it up, but aluminum, you could melt it and it'll always be that silvery gray. So here I've got my aluminum pieces, of course, and I've got my blowtorch for heating it up, then my somewhat cold water here to quench it. Then over here, I also have a candle. So I've seen other people do this. Apparently what you can do is you can light the candle and then use the soot of the candle to cover your aluminum piece. Coincidentally, the temperature that the soot of the candle evaporates or melts or whatever it does is the same temperature that is ideal for annealing aluminum. So first I'm gonna light my candle. Now I'm gonna start with this thinner piece just to work my way up. Now if I hold the candle under here, the set will cover the surface area of the aluminum. So we've got that black soot on the aluminum. I'm gonna use my blowtorch to heat it up until that black disappears. Here we go. Okay, the black is gone. So hypothetically, this should be annealed now. See if I can bend it with my hands. Oh, I can bend it. Just bent it there a little bit. I couldn't do that before, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna get it in the vise, see if I can really get a good bend on it. Here we go. Oh. It should also be work hardening a little bit as I pound on it with this hammer, but look at that. It's not the prettiest thing, but looks like a like a solid bend there. Definitely damaged the metal with that. Probably shouldn't be using a steel hammer like that. Probably should just stick with the mallet. But it's a really good angle right there. That works surprisingly well. And it's also not hot to the touch. After that quench, it cooled down immediately. So this worked out pretty well. So now I'm gonna move on to the thicker stuff, which is a little over 50% thicker than this is. Here's my thicker piece. Light my candle again. That's pretty good. I'm not worried about covering the whole thing in the in black because I'm only gonna be bending it across the middle, so I'm not too worried about getting the entire thing properly annealed. Here's a blowtorch. That looks good. It's a really cool sound. 
The other thing you might have seen there, I don't know if it shows up on camera, when the aluminum gets up to temperature, the flame on the blowtorch actually changes color. It goes from that blue to a more orange. When you see that orange, that means that you've also met your temperature. It cools down very quickly. Don't think I can bend it with my hands, but I wouldn't expect to anyways because it's some pretty thick stuff. Here we go with the mallet. Oh. Look at that, it's pretty good. Bent it a little farther than 90 degrees though. So even without the uh, steel ball peen hammer, just using this rubber mallet, I got a really good bend in there. It's pretty sharp too. The, uh, the radius, the internal radius here, is probably about the same as the thickness. And I can probably get this even tighter if I use that other hammer. So I'll try that now. There you go. It's a really, really tight internal radius there. You should probably have some wood or something in these vise so that I don't keep putting these dimples on the inside of this aluminum here. But that's an easy thing to remember. But there you have it. That's a very tight internal radius there. And the total integrity of the piece is still not compromised. So it's still really strong overall, but you can move it around with a hammer if you want to. This process only took me like three minutes each and I could definitely have done it faster had I not had a camera here. So it's a really easy process. I over bent some of these pieces. So it's a little beyond 90 degrees. So it's a little less than 90 degrees, but I could easily just have that up against a flat surface and pound it flat again. So now that I know that I can get these pieces into a really tight internal radius, I can start designing the aluminum steering mechanism for my electric mountain board. I believe you can also harden these back up after annealing. It's a process called age hardening, which I'm not gonna try yet, but I definitely will in the future. So I'm gonna get started designing my mountain board, but that's all I have for now, so bye.